Good morning and good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Andrew, my pronouns are he and him, and I work for the University of Alberta Sustainability Council. Um, thank you so much for joining us today at our final uh, lecture in the uh, Sustainable Cities Speaker Series between RWTH Aachen University and the University of Alberta. Uh, I would like to start today's lecture with a treaty acknowledgement. The University of Alberta respectfully acknowledges that we are located on Treaty 6 territory. This land is the ancestral space of the Papaches Cree and Métis Nation and traditional territory of Blackfoot, Cree, Dene, Stony Nakoda, Anishabe, and many other Indigenous peoples whose histories, languages, and cultures continue to influence our vibrant community. As a settler, I continue to reflect on what it means to live, work, and play on Treaty 6 territory and am committed to growing my knowledge and understanding the important histories and how I can honour the gifts of these lands. The Sustainability Council works with all faculties at our university to spark learning, discovery, and citizenship for sustainability. We offer courses and experiential learning opportunities for students, support sustainability-related research, put on sustainability awareness events, and engage with the broader community on sustainability initiatives. This lecture series is a joint partnership between RWTH Aachen University in Germany and the University of, Al of Alberta here in Canada. Eduardo Jimenez is here to speak about the partnership between our two universities. Thank you, Andrew, for having me here. Good morning, everyone, and good evening, everyone, those of you uh, in Germany. Uh, before we start today's lecture, I'd like to very briefly describe the uh, University of Alberta and RWTH Aachen partnership. This is a very dynamic collaboration between our institutions, and it started back in 20, 2017. Our alliance spans a diverse spectrum uh, of disciplines, fostering innovation and academic excellence. At the heart of this partnership are numerous joint um, research projects and programs integrating the expertise of both institutions. There are a few programs established by the partnerships. For example, undergraduate students can embark on transformative research experiences throughout the, uh, through the um, EUR and Europe International Fellowships, uh, while graduate and PhD students can pursue their academic ambitions through the uh, Junior uh, Research Fellowship. Postdoctoral researchers can further enrich their careers with the uh, Senior Research Fellowship and offering a platform for advanced exploration and collaboration. Sustainability is actually uh, actually takes center stage as a core theme of the uh, U of A and RWTH Aachen Partnership, uh, reflecting a shared commitment to addressing the global challenges, uh, the collaborative effort not only uh, enhances the academic landscape of both institutions, but also contributes to the broader uh, goal of creating a sustainable, impactful future. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending this lecture. And um, if, you, if you're really interested in, in learning more about the U of A and um, Aachen Partnership, just please reach out uh, anytime and um, I'll be happy to, to answer any question that you might have about the partnership. Uh, now I send it back uh, to you, Andre. Awesome, thank you so much, Eduardo. We will hold a Q&A session after the presentation. Uh, so please think of questions uh, and feel free, feel free to throw them in the chat while we're, while we're going along. Uh, now I'd like to introduce our speaker today. Uh, Dr. Agnes Forster holds the Chair of Planning, Theory, and Urban Development at the Faculty of Architecture at RWTH Aachen University. She obtained her degree in architecture from TU Munich and EPFL Lausanne, followed by a doctoral degree in urban development from TU Munich. She researches and designs processes from the neighborhood to the regional levels with a focus on the effects of participatory planning approaches in the context of spatial transformation processes. Thank you so much for being here today, and I will pass it off to you now. Hey, good morning and good evening, everybody. Um, I, thank you very much for this kind invitation. I will share my screen now and um, just um, wait some seconds here. Okay, here we are. And I hope that you see the full screen now. So, so the t title of my lecture is Revira a transformation platform, a platform approach for regional and sustainability transitions. 
So I will tell you about a an activity, a collaborative activity within our University of Technology um, to, to establish the university in a partnership, in a regional partnership um, that um, tackles with the effects of the nationwide coal exit um, that has been decided in 2020 by the national government as we are in our university situated in one of Germany's coal regions, the largest coal region in Europe, in the western part of Germany. So you here we are in the middle of Europe, in Germany, and you see the three current um, lignite open cast mine mines that we have. We have currently three regions where we have this kind of mining still going on the Rhineland area here in the western part of Germany. And in the eastern part, we have the central German area and the Lusatian area. And when we zoom in a little bit in the Rhineland area, we have to be aware that the university, our university, the RWTH, Aachen University, is just sitting next to this region that will undergo a, an important transformation process within the next years to come. So the situation in 2020 was that to reduce CO2 emissions worldwide, the contribution of Germany is to, to find this exit strategy from this kind of energy. And there are regional and local up to region and super regional consequences of this strategy. So you might have a look into some impressions from that region. It's the just neighboring region of our university in the Rhineland. So we have a large scale issues with these open cast mines. You have, you see the um, the Hambach mine, um, just in the middle between Cologne and Aachen. And so there's a large scale transformation going on regarding landscape, questions of water, of infrastructure, and of course of energy. But we also have small scale questions, for example, of abandoned villages just next to these open, um, open cast mines. Uh, where now this mining has been stopped and the, some of these abandoned villages um, are preserved and can now be transformed into something like future-oriented villages. So here we are with this lignite coal phase out by 20, 2030. We have some major challenges to that we are confronted with uh, the, as society. But I think this also um, is an issue for a university, um, for our university. So we have the setup of a post-fossile economy and society. So this is the aim to really fundamentally transform the existing economy and society to this post-fossile version of, to a new post-fossile version. But it's also a question how to transform a landscape and to gain a biodiverse landscape and also a healthy landscape from this kind of mining, coming back to a new kind of landscape. It's also always an issue, the loss of homeland in these kinds of regions, because this kind of open cast mine destroyed a lot of our homeland and so it's always also an issue of identity when it comes to this kind of heavy territorial transformation and before we came up with this kind of consensus of this exit strategy we also had a heavy debate and even kind of discord protests on the ground 
fighting for a earlier end of this kind of extensive kind of land use strategy. So we had a heavy discord also in this region. And now it's a, a time to find a new way to cooperate, to, 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 to communicate on eye level, to participate and also to add to questions of local democracy. So here again, so for example, this um, open cast lignite uh, mine Hambach is here just between the city of Cologne and Aachen. And in the Western part of that region, we have the, our university. The RWTH Aachen University. So this is an important institution, of course, of an um, importance larger than a re the regional level. So it's a national importance. And we also claim that it's we have an international, of course, network and importance. We have um, almost, we have about... Um, 4,700,000 students. We have uh, graduates every year. We have a, a large amount of international students. There's a, we have around a staff of around 10,000 people working in Aachen, but not all, maybe not always uh, living there, living maybe in the region. Um, so this is in very important institution, and we have um, celebrated the 150th anniversary of the of our institution some years ago. Um, and in in times of transformation, institutions can play a very important role, also of stability, as and as maybe important partners in times where there's a lot of things change we can contribute something. There's a kind of vision of the RWTH of our university. And we call this vision Integrated Interdisciplinary University of Technology. So what you see here, this is this kind of profile areas. We have a set of profile areas, modeling, simulation, and sciences, information, communication, and technology, medical science, and technology. And this is an effort that has been started some 10 years ago to, to overcome in a way the limitations of, the, of a structure based on faculties. So we have nine faculties in our, our university, but the idea is to, to add to the, the, these sectors of these faculties a, in, a, in a kind of matrix way, a, 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 a structure that allows for a deeper interdisciplinary cooperation beyond the borders of the faculty. So these profile areas allow for this kind of interdisciplinarity. And we are all always looking for further future growth areas. So this is this kind of blind or the blank spot there. This is not a kind of, um, this is a dynamic structure. So it, the idea is to further develop future fields that need for interdisciplinary research. So when it comes to the mission of the RWTH Aachen University to contribute to the regional transformation process, the idea is that we can provide an integrated interdisciplinary knowledge resource and to make this available for the region. And and going beyond interdisciplinarity means to open up for and setting up inter transdisciplinary partnerships with regional stakeholders that go beyond also project durations. What we know now so far, and what is very important, of course, in the daily life of the university, of the research, are projects. Of course, they have these kind of but they have come with some limitations. So when we think about a strategic partnership of a university in a region that undergoes a profound transformation process towards sustainability, we should go beyond the idea of projects. So, um, so this is one thing, transdisciplinary partnerships beyond individual projects, and another question or 
contribution to the regional transformation process in that coal re former coal region are is to strategically push education and career, career paths in direct contact with transformation issues in the region and coordinating and bundling the university's activities, investments and projects in the region to generate spatial impact. So this is a question I'm coming from the Department of Architecture and I'm an architect and spatial planner. So we, we have a lot of sectoral or te technology oriented projects. Of course, the question is how to coordinate this so that it has a spatial impact when it comes to questions of impact on the ground. And the, this partnership or the mission of our university towards the regional transformation process also um, touches the questions of science communication and science engagement among a wider regional community. So we have reflected with a broader team on the question how a university can act in relation to transformation processes towards sustainability. And we came up with this model, my colleagues and me, the transformation triad of the Aachen transformation model. So I, my lecture will be on what you see on the left side, the Revira transformation platform. So the idea is to set up a platform that goes beyond project activities. Um, but and the, the 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 perspectives of university towards transformation can be that we firstly we research transformation processes that um we have seen, for example, in the past. Yeah, what has so we have had kind of structural change in other regions, even coal regions. So we can research these kind of transformation processes. So this is most, in most cases, disciplinary or interdisciplinary research that can be done. Another dimension, another level, how the university can contribute to transformation is to take an active part in transformation process, to actively shape transformation. And this is very much the idea also of the Rivira platform. And the third perspective is not only to think about the transformation of a region towards sustainability, but also to think about the transformation of the university itself. So it is a both-sided or two-sided process that th these questions, these global challenges that we have now very much located also in our region, with this kind of energy transition, um, ask or demands or invites us to reflect also on the question, how should we further develop a university, the questions of research and also of teaching with regards to these challenges. Um, so this is research transformation. So there are very different ways to link university and the questions of transformation. We read them in this triad. The idea of the platform is to bridge really university. So we have um, stakeholders, researchers, students in our university. And on the other side, we have stakeholders, citizens in our region, in society. And to set up a kind of joint process where both sides come into an active dialogue. And you see the, the just the icon of the um, SDGs sustainable development goals, this is a global issue, and we want to translate these goals into a process, into a regional process um, of collaboration and um, kind of self-development and also sustainable development in the region. So the, this kind of platform approach, the this is the very basic layout of Revira. Revira as a platform um, invites these researchers and citizens and stakeholders from the region. So we, we, we organize actors and arenas in a way to combine, to, 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 to set up new linkages between different forms of knowledge. This is also the very basic idea of transformation processes. So transformation is about setting up new linkages between 
system goal and transformation knowledge. So we have here knowledge about transformation goals. So we undergo a process we are, where we are looking for new ways to orient. So these, you know, the, the, the goals from 2000, 2000, 2010, now they have changed with this new strategy of the coal exit. So we are changing our goals. So this is one thing. And we also, we are looking for new ways to orient. A second question is the understanding of the system under transformation. It's very much a very complex issue, what's going on on the ground. So this is a kind of knowledge that can all can essentially be provided by researchers. Whereas I would say that the goals should not be just defined by researchers, but this is a political question and there can be a kind of support by research, but this would have to be based very much on a dialogue between the university and the region, of course. And then there is knowledge about action, how to act, how to, how to do this transformation. And, you know, for a transform for shaping a transformation process, it would not be enough just to work in in, in only one, di one dimension of this kind of knowledge, but the question is how to set up new linkages in this between these different forms of knowledge in this process. I gave you some insight into the structure of the university with these faculties and profile areas. On the side of the region, we have thought about um, you know, the kind of target groups that we could address. And we came up with the idea of kind of life worlds in the Rhenish Dictat Mining area as a way to think about regional stakeholders um, from different kind of competencies and resources that can actively contribute. They, they can really um, share important kind of knowledge, but also resources in the regional transformation process. For example, we have a corporate world, and of course, there are important ways of cooperation between the RWTH Aachen University and a broad range of firms in the region, for example. But we also have the educational world. So that means that we have schools, we have undergraduate and graduate questions, but we also have lifelong learning, especially when it comes to a reorientation in the labor market with this kind of change that is going on. We have everyday life, we have local initiatives, um, but we also have social and institutional responsibilities. Um, and there might be a need for a creative world also that is very much attached often to urban regions, to agglomerations, and not so much to this more rural area. But I think we need for creativity in these transformation processes. This is why we address these kind of five life worlds and we say, okay, these would be kind of strategic partners or rooms for cooperation that we um, aim at. The core principles of the Revira um, platform are um, an open space to provide for an open space, to invite people in, into an open space that is also a learning space so this is a mission of the university. We can invite people into a learning process, an inter- and transdisciplinary learning process. It is also about bridging different disciplines and life worlds. And it is about actors and their activities. So we invite, we activate, we engage, and we allow for, ex um, for exchange and engagement. So here you see some... You have some impressions um, into the working of the working process of Revira. So this was very much about this kind of workshop atmosphere to bring these different disciplines and stakeholders into a dialogue. It's also about collective knowledge sharing or knowledge generating. It's also about science communication. So there are quite different parts of this platform activities. And we started these activities 
in 2019 as an open process. So we did not start with the master plan or kind of blueprint of Revira, but this was really a, a project and an initiative also of science engagement in resonance in relation with also um, these different stakeholders. And the question, the idea was to co-create also further ideas what Revira can contribute. So these were these first workshops started within or just within the ABT, the, the university itself with these different uh, disciplines and profile areas. And then we opened up this process into the region. So here you have a timeline starting in 2019 with a kind of orientation from within the university. We have a core team, a steering team and researchers that add to structural change. And then we opened this process into these different life worlds. But then we had this COVID-19 pandemic situation. So this was very much online during these two, two years. And then we really opened up the Revira pro process into Revira ateliers. So open workshop formats face-to-face -face in the region. And the most recent activity and our will also pre present this activity to you, was the setup of a temporary university for eight days last summer in the region in one of these abandoned villages. And this activity will also uh, be continued this year. So this is an open process and a learning process. And I will now share some, uh, tell you something about the tools and formats of Revira to research, shape and enable for regional transformation. So we came up with this, this kind of um, strategy here. We said, okay, the Revira pro process should, um, should allow for a set of linkages and interrelated transformative moments. So the platform idea is to create linkages between different forms and kinds of knowledge between different stakeholders and then to couple also these different forms of knowledge and resources that the different stakeholders bring in to then really maybe add projects towards a joint orientation. This is the transformation compass that we also introduced. So I will come to this um, diagram. Um, we'll always come back to this diagram and now start with this question of orientation, because what, what we learned at the beginning, and you have to um, be aware that the setup of the platform was just some months before the national decision for this um, um, exit strategy. So this was really a, a time where, where there was a question of orientation. And we said, okay, the, the, a university is also kind of neutral partner um, a reliable partner, hopefully, where we can really open a kind of room to discuss also questions of normative questions, questions of orientation. And this is also a question for researchers. How can they add to some, a greater, a common good to the questions of sustainability? And we added the idea of the compass, allowing for five goals. So these are um, goals that allow for interpretation for a discussion that is indicated by this photo here from a workshop and also by this diagram that the goals are not you know, set in stone and totally defined, but it is rather of indicating a direction and allowing for a joint discussion on these shared goals. So it is of course to achieve environmental sustainability and climate neutrality, but it's also about to, it's also about uh, new forms of value creation. So this is the economic side. Of course, it is also about the questions how to create new jobs. It's a question of the quality of life that should be enhanced in the region to ensure inclusion and participation. So there is a process quality in the transformation process. And it is all, and the and the the, four, the fifth um, goal or fifth dimension of the compass um, indicates that we should never forget that transformation processes are always open process. They cannot be defined in advance. So every kind of action or contribution should 
also facilitate development. So this is a rather open category. So at the beginning of the Rivira process, this compass was a very useful tool to stimulate this kind of get together between disciplines and beyond disciplines with, um, between researchers and stakeholders um, of the region. A second question was then how to organize a landscape of knowledge and competencies. So here I want to go back to the question of this inter integrated interdisciplinary university, this vision of, the, of our university. And we organized fields of innovation that will, that so hopefully, or that could hopefully support the regional transformation process. These are these seven fields of innovation. It's, en it's about energy, materials and cycles, um, artificial intelligence and information, production health, mobility and productive landscape. So this was a kind of knowledge architecture that came out out of a, our inner university um, kind of brainstorming sessions with the interdiscipline, with these researchers from different disciplines. And we then got to know that these fields of innovation, they are really interrelated when it comes to the application in the region. So of course, questions of materials and cycles, as you find them here, are very much linked to these light green fields of the question of landscape, for example, or questions of production, you, you find them here in the middle of that network, are very much linked also to the question of materials, but also to questions of energy in this orange, as you find these contributions here. So um, this was an effort to organize this kind of contributions, innovation impulses, that the, our university can contribute to these different, from the different disciplines, but um, to go beyond these single fields of in expertise and to show the interrelatedness of these different contributions. For example, here we have um, the question of health, health and mobility, and also artificial intelligence and information are also quite closely interrelated when it comes to the application in a region, for example. Um, we then went beyond this question, you know, organizing a, a library of knowledge and uh, science communication about these different fields of innovation. We wanted to set up a more interactive perspective, open a more interactive perspective to, to how could we then organize cross linkages between these different fields of knowledge and bring them into a dialogue. So we invented another um, method or approach. So Ravira was all, always this open space where we then invented some, came up with some ideas for new formats and methods also. And we set up the idea of the future synthesizer. This is a tool that allows for iterative and networked ideas for a sustainable futures. So, this is a very physical tool for, for now. It could also be transformed or further developed, maybe also as a hybrid tool that allows for cooperation, um, also be between our universities, for example, also in teaching, or it can be this future synthesizer can be applied, you know, in real world setting with the stakeholders, but could also be applied in teaching. We have now um, gained some we have already organized some 20 sessions with this tool and it's quite promising approach. So the idea is to, to, to organize um, co-creative sessions of maybe one or two or three hours with a um, set of stakeholders that bring in sitting around this kind of table, this is the future synthesizer. And this is a picture of the presentation of the result of a two hour session. Um, to 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 bring in different forms of knowledge. So this is the you know this idea of Rivera is to 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 create linkages between these different forms of knowledge coming from these different worlds. And this is exactly what what the future synthesizer does. So it allows for gen knowledge generation um, and relation building and integration. 
um, of different forms of knowledge is a, it's a, it's a way that um, is based on social interaction um, and it's also a way to visualize um, this you know very dynamic social setting so it's a tool to visualize these uh, landscape of arguments that come in and it's it it stimulates perspective sharing between different stakeholders and it has a di important time dimension because it negotiates between the today, the situation today, the situation tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. Or you could even start in the future. This would be then called backcasting, starting the day after tomorrow and thinking, uh, coming back to our present situation and thinking about the steps that could be taken to shape this um, future vision. So the future synthesizer um, um, works on the time axis from the today to the morrow and the day after tomorrow and uh, supports knowledge sharing or these linkages between these different forms of knowledge. That's why it is very much transdisciplinary approach in case you invite stakeholders to join these sessions, what we did. Um, but it is in the same time a way to also empower people to contribute to to trans to reach a transformation that is always perceived as a quite complex issue. And these um, future synthesizers also a way to address complexity literacy. One could say so. You take part in a, one can really take part physically in a social interaction and contribute to com this this to solving complex future problems. So this is a quite nice experience. Um, and then maybe to couple transformative power. So different stakeholders bring in their ideas, but, but maybe also resources. And these could be coupled and um, designed or, or shared for kind of joint projects, for example, or joint action that could be taken in the transformation process. So this was also a phase of ideation in a way. And in one of these future synthesizer sessions, we came up with a, a new idea. So what could we do next in a transformation process that is really long, has a long term, a very a long time horizon? Because the the you know the 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 exit of this um coal-fired power station in the Rhineland area will be in six or seven years. This is quite early, but you know, the transformation of the landscape and uh, the filling of these open cast mines will take some 20, 30 years. So it's really a long, long term or a long time horizon. And uh, so th this raised the question, how could we then do something tomorrow? Not waiting for the next, you know, 20 years to come, but how could we then, sh um, how could also Ravira contribute to a kind of um, kind of um, action on the ground or experiencing doing something just next year? And that's why we came up with the idea of setting up a temporary university. So just 12 man months um, after this Ravira Atelier, when we came up with the idea of the temporary university, we just started it, we opened it for some eight days. This was last June in 2023. Um, so you, Temporary University Hambach, so this is the name of this mine. Um, join in. So temporary university to, and in Germany, it means also do, to do something. So join in, do something, take action. And we, here you have an aerial view of that village that we chose um, as location, as a location for our university. Um, this was this abandoned region that will be really developed within the next years. And the, now in this format of the temporary university, this platform idea became even more concrete because what you see here, all these logos, it's about... 70 partners that contributed to this program of these eight days. So we had, starting from Saturday um, just to Sunday, so these were these eight days, um, 
Yeah, no, for Saturday so, so Saturday in June, um, we had about 90 kind of um, activities with these programs, so workshops, lectures, just some um, tours in the region, exhibitions, arts activities. Um, and we had all, all these partners contributing to the program. So, so it was quite nice to, to find out that the quite abstract at the beginning, Ravira was quite an abstract idea with the platform. Here, it became um, much more tangible with these contributions of these different partners collaborating on eye level. And the program and these contributions within the problem, they had these kind of, um, so we call, uh, they addressed different kind of modes. So it was about listen and see, explore and tour, chat and celebrate, new perspectives and ideas, talk and argue, work together, join in and be creative, eat and drink. This is very important also in transformation processes and experience and rest. So this was our invitation to this. Um, it's also kind of placemaking to experience change. We um, chose um, this plot of the former kindergarten in that village um, and set up these activities. Here you have some impressions um, from this temporary university. And um, we really had sessions where we had, on the one hand, had students from our university being on place and having a seminar or presenting their kind of interim results of a project and having then a direct contact both with researchers and with, you know, uh, people from the region, local partners and even citizens that were interested in um, also looking behind the scenes of the university is kind of open classroom concept and was a very nice activity and we had walks around in that village um, an excursion just you know in the neighborhood there and and this year we will be able to open some of these abandoned buildings because they will then be prepared for for the renovation in the next year. So we will have access um, also to some other plots this year. Here you see this, this direct um, contact or you have this, this view from the village into that uh, mine. And this is quite impressive. Also the small scale situation and the really amazing large scale situation of that um, kind of open landscape. And we allowed also for um this kind of discussions um we had kind of arts there um dancing music i think this is really important also to to, to just to open the university for this broader forms of learning and experiencing and here for example we had a kind of drawing exercise a collaborative drawing that was created during the, these eight days. So you see these patches here and people um, called all these small drawings on this really amazing wall, quite nice. And we also had dialogue with civil society and we had really students involved that um, themselves created, for example, this bar here, this furniture, um, as a contribution to the university, students coming from architecture and urban design. So um, I will now come to an end with these kind of insights into uh, the Rivera process and, and will want to come back to the slide with these different dimensions, how research and the university can contribute to regional transformation process towards sustainability. I would argue it's not just a question of you know, the classical perspective of understanding res tra transformation research, doing better research, but it's very much about finding ways to shape, to contribute to transformation processes. So we call this transformational research. I would say the temporary university adds to this idea and also adds um, and pushes the idea to enable the university to, to to form a, to transform the university and also in this case teaching for example and also the question of science communication to push it further 
into a more direct contact with you know local citizens and stakeholders so we added also the the question of enabling our own university and um, some final reflection so i think in the light of the massive ecologic economic and social challenges globally as well as at the level of cities and regions the university of technology like our university in Aachen. So universities face more and more expectations such as enhanced societal responsibility. So we are of course responsible and people also want to see effective contributions and impulses to solve complex problems. And people are also expecting universities to take active an active role in explaining, discussing and negotiating its knowledge and innovation in many different arenas. So this is to enable the university to be a partner in these uh, fa facing these global challenges of trans, um, sustainability trans, uh, transitions. And it's becoming increasingly clear that there's a need for contributions of science that go beyond individual projects. And moreover, expertise and contributions from technology have to be embedded in fundamental social, economic, and spatial change processes. So we can, this is also a question about universities of technology. So technology alone will not contribute um, to these questions, but needs new partnerships with spatial questions, with social questions, with economic questions. So we need, need for a new ways of inter and transdisciplinary integration. Um, and a changing role of a university as a partner in transformation processes also brings with it new responsibilities and the raised importance of a university, university's reliability, transparency, and partnership at our level. So, um, so far, some insights into what's going on here in Germany, in the Western part regarding um, sustainability tr transitions. Thank you very much for your kind attention. I'm really looking forward for, uh, to some discussion now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Forster. I found that talk um, very, very interesting. I think it's really, really interesting to look at um, how we, go about the sustainability transitions that, that we talk about so much. Um, everyone feel free to throw questions in the chat um, if you have anything. Um, while folks are doing that, I will, I guess I'll start off with a question. Um, so we'll going about this process, did you encounter much public or community opposition to the transition? And if so, how did you sort of navigate that um, and like build that into your process? So what, thank you so much for that question. There has been really heavy discord in the region because we had this kind of local demonstrations on the ground, um, you know, pleading for this exit. Um, and there was heavy, um, so, so there was a kind of persistence also of the energy company that did not want that. Um, I think we, so we have seen, or we try with the Vera process and I think of course, this would never be perfect to, to play the role of an intermediary so that we also have collaborations, you know, with the local protest camps on the one hand side, on the other hand side, having contact to the local politicians and then to the researchers. Of course, this would never be perfect. And of course, there can also be some protests against the our university that also has heavy collaboration still, you know, with fossil intensive industries. So I think there is also kind of maybe um, not dark side, but I think other side of the university, of course, um, where we are coming from. Um, but the platform is one step to play rather the role of an intermediary and open these kind of sp spaces for um, discussion then bringing in the one truth or the one perspectives of one research. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm not seeing anything else in the chat yet. Um, so I guess I'll ask another question. 
Um, so where we are in Alberta uh, is also, so in like the Canadian context, Alberta is also very um, fossil fuel uh, heavy. There's a lot of employment in this sector um, and there's a lot of communities built around um, that industry. I was wondering if you see transitions like this as um, like applicable in other uh, places around the globe. Um, could like a similar process like this be adapted to um, like a community in Alberta, for example? Um, I have been um, participating in the Falling Wall Science Summit that was um, took place in Berlin in 2022. And there, there it's quite nice format because it brings um, together um, globally initiatives for science engagement. And in, within this two days kind of conference that we had, and I had also had the chance to present some 10 minutes, no, five minutes pitch of Remira. Um, we had really a nice exchange of the question of science engagement. I have not seen another platform approach, but there was, there, I've seen so many ways for science to engage in societal and environmental and economic questions. So this was really an eye opener. And I would say that it can be transferred. So we had a nice dialogue, for, for example, with the situation in South Africa, a colleague also dealing with the questions of um, these kind of mining tra transitions, etc. And we also have in, in the European context, some exchange with situations, Poland or, you know, in, in the UK. And um, I would say that the basic idea or the, or the impulses um, can should not be copied, <laughs> but but maybe they give some inspirations to find some site specific and context specific approaches. But what I see also, or not but but end what I see also that we there's really a kind of. Um, energy and interest coming from the university, especially from the students also in the after Corona, we really felt a kind of need to, to have some more direct contact between, you know, the, the university being there a little bit, just, you know, in the air, not very much on the ground and bringing students also in direct contact to, to local and, you know, physical, spatial, social questions, because this is a really deep experience also in in the in, in teaching and education being educated to see okay there is a mission there are questions on the ground and the knowledge that I develop what I learn etc is can be useful and I can translate that so um these are maybe small you know moments and you cannot count them or it's it's hard to, to to count the impact. Yeah, it's not about money, things like that. But it, I think it can, it it, it can be very important impulses into the questions of sustainability because you know, on both sides, the students on the one side and the researchers and the young researchers, for example, and on the other side, the local stakeholders and regional stakeholders, they have then gone through another kind of experience and this can be transformative for them individually but also on the group level and I think this I think it really makes sense so I would never say that it is a blueprint and but I think it's a nice new direction or it's not new there are other universities soon that important direction of a university's activity I would say yeah thank you thank you for that um all right, um, still not seeing anything. If anyone does have any questions, feel please throw them in the chat. Um, I, I know that the Q and A's at these lectures is always a great way to dig into the content a little more. Um, yeah, I guess I'll, I'll ask one more question. Um, so you you touched on the importance of, of like the few food and the music. Um, and sort of that community aspect in the platform approach. Um, can you talk a little more about uh, sort of the importance of that community building and that aspect in order to like navigate those discussions and bring people together? I think especially what we um, 
learned is that especially in these uh, coal regions um people are you know they they miss there's a lack of these local places of encounter of these communities because they have also been destroyed in the process and in these um you know montan industry structure this is a very top down structure so it's a very you know it's a very power it has been a very powerful way to reorganize that region in the last 30 years so it is it is so mm, changing the focus a little bit more to the bottom up question yeah to to give this counter direction of local initiatives um to me it seems to be very important not as the one solution but it provides more diversity and it is it allows for kind of doing it yourself to developing yourself and um this is not an easy process because usually a university is also a little bit organized top down and it is a very powerful partner. So it's really an asymmetric situation. You have an abandoned village on the one hand side and the RWTH Aachen with the 10,000, you know, people, staff and this almost 50,000 stu 50, students. So it's really it's it's not a very balanced situation and um yeah and this is the kind of line of tension also that we experience um but this is a contribution also to this discord or these kind of problems that we have seen also in the democratic process so i think it's also to to give room to these you know, smaller communities to, to those who do not have the money to 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 listen to to act to to engage in active listening, also for these uh, less privileged um, situations. Um, but I think this this is still a a debate that has to be, go on, and I think we should also think about a network of um, education institutions. So we should maybe also go beyond the idea that one university can do this. It's also kind of hegemonial situation, to, but to think of a network situation that integrates primar primary schools, other, you know, um, institutions that um, deal with questions of education and development. So I think the, the Revira process is an open process. It is not a master plan. So, and it is, a, it's also in a way, in a way, an experiment. And I think we can go even further. So these have been the first steps and we will go on. And I think also this question has to be, maybe be raised again. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, thank you so much. I think we are we are basically at the end of the amount of time we have today. Um, thank you so much for being here. Um, I really appreciated you joining the lecture. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, yeah, thank you so much. Have a good day, everyone.